Hello everyone, my name is Kavashi Charolta Beata and I will present you my PhD topic which is surgical aspects of colorectal cancer treatment. Let me present you my three months progress. A few words about myself. I am a fourth year surgery resident in Toll Defense Hospital, Zagled, and I'm a first year PhD student here at the CTM. My supervisor is Abraham Sobolch and my SMS is Onet. What is my vision? I want to improve the immediate post-operative and the long-term quality of life of patients following colorectal cancer surgery. What is my mission? I want to bring the latest scientific data to clinical use in the surgical field. For this, I have two specific goals. One of them is to see which type of anastomosis is best to perform after total mesorectal excision. And the second one, I would like to compare the different types of endoscopic uh, colorectal tumor localization methods. Both of them will be a meta-analysis. So the first one is comparing safety and quality of life of end-to-end -to, -end to other types of anastomosis after total mesorectal excision. So as we all know, worldwide, there's an estimated 1.8 million people diagnosed with colorectal cancer, from which more than 700,000 cases are only rectal cancer cases. In Hungary, yearly, there are 10,000 cases of colorectal cancer diagnosed. Anastomotic leakage is reported at around 13% within 30 days of surgery. That can increase up to 20% uh, beyond 30 days postoperatively. Up to 90% of these patients who undergo total mesorectal excision will have a low anterior resection syndrome, which will impair their quality of life. At this point, there is no consensus on which type of anastomosis is safer for a surgeon to perform. Thus, the aim of our study is to investigate which type of anastomosis is best in terms of safety and quality of life, especially if end-to-end -end anastomosis is as safe as the others in terms of safety. So just a quick words about TME because I know most of us are not surgeons here. So in TME, uh, basically we, we excise the whole, the whole mesorectal compartment, which includes not only the rectum, but also the mesorectal fat and the lymph nodes. This is the standard surgical resection technique for rectal cancer cases. Thus, we will exclude all benign lesions and endometriosis. After a TME, a surgeon can perform more types of anastomosis. The most famous one, as you can see here, is end-to-end, side-to-end, and colonic J-pouch. So our clinical question would be, does end-to-end -end anastomosis show any difference in terms of postoperative morbidity and quality of life compared to the other types of anastomosis? For this, we use a PICO framework where our patients are adults following total mesorectal excision. Our investigator our investigator is the end-to-end -end anastomosis, and we would like to compare it to side-to-end anastomosis, to colonic J-pouch, and if there's enough data, to transfer to coloplasty also. We divided our outcomes in two, two outcomes, primary and secondary. The primary would be, of course, anastomotic leakage, mortality, and quality of life score. Secondary, if there's enough data, we would like to, to check for surgical site infection, ileus, sexual dysfunction, length of hospital stay, and bowel movement also. What is our hypothesis? Well, we hope that end-to-end -end anastomosis is as good as the other types of anastomosis in terms of safety and quality of life. What will be the clinical implication? Well, with the decrease of morbidity and with the decrease of anastomotic leakage, we will also decrease the hospital stay of this patient and we will provide them a good intestinal function outside the hospital and a good quality of life. We conducted our systematic search on the 8th of November this year, and our search key consists of uh, these uh, three parts. The first one is regarding the surgery. The second one is all different kinds of anastomosis and how they, um, maybe in other countries, they call it somehow else. And the third part is regarding randomization because we only want to include randomized control trials in our meta-analysis. As you can see, we had over 4,000 hits. So this is uh, the flowchart of our selection. Uh, after the duplicate removal and the title and abstract full text selection, we also did the citation chaser, and in total, we are down to 30 full text articles. So yes, we started the data extraction. We actually finished it for the anastomotic leakage, um, and uh, we hope that by the end of this year, we'll finish with all the other outcomes uh, that we want to assess also. My second topic is comparing the accuracy of endoscopic tattooing to other methods of colorectal lesion localization before laparoscopic surgery. This also will be a meta-analysis. 
a little bit about the background. So colonoscopy, you all know, is the gold standard uh, method of detection for colorectal lesion. Its sensitivity to detect adenoma six millimeter or larger varies from 75 to 93 percent. But unfortunately, the accuracy of the localization varies uh, significantly between 37 percent, which is for the colon transversum, uh, all the way to 98 percent. Minimal invasive surgery is becoming the gold standard uh, for uh, colorectal disease treatment, but unfortunately, surgeons lose their tactile sense, which in case of non-visible lesions, it is essential. With inaccurate lesion localization, um, it, can, it can lead to blind resection or resection of the wrong colonic segment, an unexpected change in the previously planned procedure, or even a permanent oostomy. Thus, the aim of our study is to see which type of preoperative endoscopic method for localizing these tumors are best. For this, we have the clinical question that which preoperative endoscopic method can we use to accurately find uh, these lesions that are not visible in laparoscopic surgery? For P, we include, for patients, we include uh, all patients with all kinds of colorectal lesions, benign or malignant, and even polyps. We would like to test the endoscopic tattoo with ink, with India ink, compared to other types of localization method such as endoscopic clip or ICG clip, autologous blood, sterile carbon particle suspension, methylene blue, and maybe even intraoperative endoscopy. The outcome for now is just the intraoperative visualization of the tumor. You may ask yourself why we didn't choose the PERD framework. Uh, well, we unfortunately don't have enough information about all the uh, comparators about sensitivity and specificity, so PICO framework works best for us now. Our hypothesis is that the endoscopic tattoo with India ink is the most accurate preoperative method to localize colorectal tumors. What is our clinical implication? Well, we want to decrease the surgical time and we want to decrease the conversion to open surgery. This is our preliminary search. Um, the search key consists of two domains. First one is regarding the uh, localization of, of the um, colorectal tumors and the second one is the type of localization method. Um, we conducted our preliminary search in three major databases and we got around 13,000 uh, hits. There is a previous uh, systematic review and meta-analysis, but uh, this one uh, has been, um, it only compares conventional, conventional colonoscopy versus endoscopic tattooing, and it uh, uses an indirect comparison between one-arm studies, so we hope we can do a bit better than this and there is no prosper registration at this time. So there are a few key articles that I found. Uh, first of all, tattoo versus uh, metallic uh, uh, clip. There are two uh, great studies. There's uh, the only RCT that I found is the sterile carbon particle suspension versus India ink for um, uh, coronic lesions, um, and autologous blood um, uh, versus tattoo also. So in summary, we have uh, these two topics that I just uh, presented to you. The first one we plan to submit by May next year and the second one by July. Thank you for your attention and I would like to finish with uh, my favorite quote. It is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent. It is the most one adaptable to change. Thank you. Beautiful presentation. Uh, I would just like to ask you something about your first topic. Um, regarding patients with colorectal cancer, we, we know that most of them receive, for example, neuroadjuvant therapy, uh, and that could influence the outcome of the uh, anastomosis maybe. Have you thought of taking that into account as a confounder? Yes, actually we have more confounders that uh, we would like to assess while uh, doing our data extraction. One of them is neoadjuvant therapy, and hopefully we can do a subgroup analysis on not only neoadjuvant therapy, but also on what type of surgery there was performed, open, laparoscopic, conversion, maybe even robotic. Uh, and also another uh, important question is this, if the patient had a temporary elostoma or not. So we hope we can do uh, like a subgroup for these three. Thank you. Congratulations on your presentation. My question is that what does low entry resection syndrome consist of? Well, we know that the rectum has a function of, uh, of uh, like a reservoir. When we excise the rectum, there is no reservoir. So these patients can have frequent uh, bowel movement. Um, that's why, for example, the colonic J pouch, as I showed you, they're trying to make a, like a, 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 like a rectum reserve. 
So uh, most of them will have, yes, uh, frequent bowel movement. That, that's the most famous. That I'd like to uh, ask a question uh, for the second project. I'd like to ask that, are you plan, uh, planning, uh, do you plan to uh, investigate other outcomes uh, for the project? Or? Uh, Yes, we will see what are the results from all these articles, but I was thinking maybe also we can check the um, surgical time, how long the surgeries take, the conversion rate. So yes, we will like to expand the outcomes, not only to one outcome. Thank you. Uh, hello, um, thank you for the presentation. I was wondering as well about the uh, first topic. Uh, there are maybe many confounders. For example, uh, you are working with clinical trials, and, and uh, I would like to know if you are considering the Evers protocol, for example, in those clinical trials, um, if you are going to take them in, into account as well. Well, um, some of my articles are really old. Okay. So it depends on what the articles has. Some of them are included that they are using the RS protocol, some of them not. So we can actually even check this and maybe do a subgroup. But I know that the articles that were presented before 2000 most probably will not have this. So, but we'll check it, thank you.